Welcome to Pay It Forward. My name is James Zerbios, and I'm the Obesity Action Coalition Vice President of Marketing and Communications. Pay It Forward is a special segment of the OAC's Stop Weight Bias campaign. And throughout these segments, we're going to be talking with our partners and champions to learn more about what they're doing to help stop weight bias. And we are so excited because today we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Gary Foster, Chief Scientific Officer at WW. Welcome, Gary. Thanks, James. Nice to be with you. It's nice to have you. Before we get started, tell us a little bit about uh, WW. I know everyone is very familiar with WW, but tell us a little bit more about it um, and then a little bit more about your role at WW as well. Sure. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at WW, as you said, and WW, for those of you who haven't heard, um, is, the, is the company formerly known as Weight Watchers. So we have a, a long story tradition as a science-based brand of almost 60 years helping people on their weight and wellness journeys. And my specific role at WW is to lead the science department. And what our science team does is really in a couple of different areas. One is to be the gatekeeper and the overseer, if you will, of all things related to the program. So we have four program pillars, food, activity, mindset, and sleep. What are the science around those areas? How do we translate the science to make those into effective behavior change journeys? for each of our members. So that's one big part of the job is, is taking care and safeguarding that our program is both science-based, which is one thing, but also that it's science proven. And then the second thing that I'm responsible for is overseeing the clinical research portfolio. So we do a variety of things that we sometimes are upstream, meaning that they create science actually um, that can help our members and the overall field. And then the other kind of research we do is to prove the efficacy of our program. It's really important to us that it not program not just be science-based, but it actually in the real world has been shown to work in rigorous randomized controlled trials. And then the other things we do are to, uh, this is sort of a third big bucket, is to embed science into everything we do. That could be uh, using the principles of behavior change and teaching them to our coaches. It could be embedding the best of behavioral science in our app. What are the features that should be used? How do we help people with stress eating? And where does that show up in the app? When's it going to show up in the right time in the right way? So a lot of our work is behind the scenes, but we're very proud of it. Um, and when, if you ask, you might expect the science guy to say science is important, but one of the most gratifying things to me about our company is that when we serve a large number of people throughout the globe, and you say our company's name and you say what comes to mind first, they say it works. And I think that's really a testament to all the behind the scenes work that the science team does at WW. Yeah, I think just by listening to you talk there, you can really um, understand the depth of, of WW and, and your role in the organization. And I know that one of the things that we've talked about many times is, is weight bias and how you know, you guys have looked at that and you're studying that. And, and what, why did a, a company like WW support the Stop Weight Bias campaign? Well, I think at a fundamental level, we see ourselves as the leader uh, globally in weight management and wellness. And for us to be silent on such a damaging topic uh, just isn't acceptable. And, and so the why behind that is that we think just from a basic humanistic perspective, the, the, the value and the dignity of any one person, that weight stigma, weight and shape based discrimination is wrong, just period, full stop. Then the other thing that we're, we're really eager to do through initiatives like this is to get the word out and to normalize a little bit. Look, it's unfortunate. We're not trying to say that there aren't bigger societal issues here and we shouldn't try to, to affect the underpinnings of why stigma happens. But we also feel a very intense, deep obligation to help our members and folks who frankly aren't our members to find ways to cope with it effectively. And to really, really recognize, to believe and to endorse um, that all of the stuff you hear is not true. And so by normalizing, I'm not saying, oh yeah, everybody's bombarding you with a lot of societal nonsense about what your weight means and how it has implications for who you are as a person. What we're really concerned about is the degree to which people internalize that bias and then end up engaging in behaviors that aren't healthy for their own goals. 
You know, so you talked about a couple different uh, key points there, the, the external pressures of weight bias and then the internalization of it. What does WW offer in the way of um, helping its members cope and deal with weight bias? We talk, we, you, you mentioned that a couple times in there. And I'm just kind of curious if you can hit some of those highlights there so that folks know, you know, how does WW help a member who's experiencing weight bias? Maybe they've internalized it, maybe they haven't yet, but what, what do you all offer? Well, we do two things. One is I'll start sort of at the 30,000 feet level and then come down to the individual member in WW. One is that we're really committed as a science-based company to research. Um, so we have funded uh, the largest study in the U.S. as well as a second study, the largest study uh, in six different countries to actually look at weight stigma. And this work is led by Rebecca Poole and others at the University of Connecticut. And what we're trying to understand there is not just and there's some basic facts that aren't known about stigma. So we want to con contribute to the science. But in addition to those in terms of prevalence and how it affects people and, and who are the people most likely uh, to demonstrate uh, discriminatory behaviors based on somebody's weight, we also want to learn a lot about the coping mechanisms. So what are the, I'll call them more healthy and less healthy coping mechanisms. When people say nasty things to you, when people attribute some part of your character based on your body weight or shape. We're also very interested in trying to get better science on the topic of uh, not everybody who experiences weight stigma internalizes it. And we know that, know that those who internalize it actually have adverse health outcomes, whether you're speaking, thinking about psychologically or medically. So we're really interested in, can we start to predict in large samples? We have we, uh, Rebecca Poole worked with almost 20,000 of our members in the U.S. and then again has expanded that to six countries to answer some of those fundamental questions. We've also done work with Rebecca Poole, uh, funded at the University of Pennsylvania. Now she's at the University of Florida, but trying to see can we can she could develop treatments that would actually minimize internalized weight bias. Um, so we're, we're really active on the research arena because we think we should because um, this is a, a really significant problem and it's also because of our core values as a science-based brand. When you get to the member level, what we're doing, again, largely behind the scenes, is we pick our words extremely carefully. Every piece of communication that goes to a member or to a coach is looked at for anything that be, could be potentially stigmatizing. What could some of those things be? How, do, how does stigmatizing language creep in to the vernacular at times? Um, there are times when we've seen copy that says things like an excuse proof approach. Well, why would you use the word excuse as if people are making excuses for themselves? Um, there are times when we're, when you'll never see this in WW language using the word cheat. Eating's not a moral issue. It's not a measure of your character or willpower. So we're, we're really, I would say, obsessed as a company about making sure that our words are used carefully. We also use a variety of different uh, body weights and shapes, uh, both in advertising, but also in the visuals that our members see uh, throughout the app and the different program materials. And finally, we're continually training our coaches because on the face of it, you can say, yeah, I would never discriminate to somebody based on their weight or shape. But a lot of this is, is uh, insidious and implicit and not at the conscious level at times. So we're always working with our coaches about how to do that. And then finally with our members, what we're doing is and then we're teaching them skills to do two things. One is to normalize it, you're not alone but also to minimize the tendency of people to internalize this bias. And those are just active cognitive behavioral skills about talking back to the thought. When you start to say things, my weight is my worth, or my weight is measured on the scale, or somebody says something nasty to you, or you're turned down for a job because of your weight, don't believe the nonsense. It is nonsense. And we can teach our members cognitive behavioral skills, such as self-talk, such as reality checks, and such as self-compassion to really uh, potentially inoculate and protect our members from the nastiness of weight-based stigma. Now, do you find, you talked about so many wonderful things there about what you're able to offer members. Now, do you find uh, members will often open up with each other, you know, and maybe in different types of support group settings or something like that, where they'll talk about bias and, 
And maybe what are some of the common areas of bias that you think or that you've seen? I know here at OAC, when we've done some public surveying, uh, bias always seems very prevalent in healthcare um, and then in interpersonal relationships between family and friends and, and, and loved ones. I'm just kind of curious to, to your thoughts on that as well as where you see bias. You know, it's the most prevalent within your members. It's exactly in the same place. And this is borne out both in an international study that will get published uh, in the next few months and a U.S. study that it's exactly what you said. Um, actually, the most frequent was from family members and often from parents, which is a pretty sad state of affairs. And you know, not to, to blame parents, but they're, they're, they're probably distressed in some way about a child's weight and their health, but they're going about it in a way that's not so helpful. So we're really interested in that area. And now actually funding some new research to help parents understand what are the motivations behind that? What are they expecting to get? And how can we get them to talk in more reasonable ways uh, about weight that's not stigmatizing? And the question is really from a kid's perspective, from a parent's perspective, what are the best ways to have that conversation? In terms of your point around how this happens in, a, in, a, in our workshop settings, sometimes it can be quite emotional. As we test out different modules, we want to make sure that we don't literally bring the whole room to tears, but it is an emotional issue. And um, it's very hurtful, the things that people say and do around people's weight and shape. So we're trying to strike that right balance where it can be a motive and, and, and get some consciousness raising about this is eroding my self-confidence, but quickly turn to what can be done about that. So that's the way we try to strike that balance. Yeah, Gary, I think everything that you've talked about, you know, today is just shows the 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 depth of what WW is doing to help people overcome weight bias and help address it. And of course, we're very appreciative for for your support of the the Stop Weight Bias campaign. But what else is WW a part of right now when it comes to addressing weight bias and and really helping people that are struggling with you know excess weight or or, or obesity? Yeah, well, we've talked about the research we're doing and really proud of that, but we also want to surround ourselves with like-minded people and, and help uh, groups like OAC, for example, who are really focused on this issue. We're not going to do this alone. We don't pretend that. We're not going to cure it. But we do think we can be part of the solution by bringing consciousness to it, doing research and funding an issue. So in addition to supporting OAC, we're supporting uh, the work in Europe through the EPOC, for example, we're supporting the work on bias that's being done by the World Obesity Federation. Uh, and we're always looking for groups, the Obesity Society, for example. Anytime that it's part of a organization's strategic focus to work on white bias, we want to be there and help them achieve their goals. Gary, thank you so much for your time today. I think it really just shows the, the depth of what WW is doing to help people that are dealing with weight bias, uh, not only behind the scenes, but also in front of the scenes with people directly. You know, so just thank you so much for, for your time and everything that WW is doing. My pleasure, James. It was great to be with you today. And thanks to you and to the OAC for all the great work that you do. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.